We'll have here a letter from Finland coming at a very difficult time from the General Secretary of the Finnish Theosophical Society. It's published in March 1941 in Theosophy in Action, which was the journal of the European Federation of the Adyar Theosophical Society. Now, Finland had experienced the Winter War, which uh, lasted from Russia's invasion of Finland on November 30th, 1939, to a final um, ceasefire armistice in March uh, 1940. And um, Finland, although they resisted Russian invasion quite, quite heroically, um, the country was devastated and they lost territory, including their second city, Vaipuri, which still remains part of Russia. Um, anyway, this letter comes a year after the Winter War and um, it's uh, amazing how theosophical activities have been maintained under, under these circumstances. So here we have it. Letter from Finland from the General Secretary. Last year has been a very trying one causing indescribable pain and suffering and changing the fate of individuals as well as of nations. You are still living in a time of stress and hell. All our sympathy is with you. As I've told you before, our nation has stood the test of karma and has emerged maimed, but still vigorous and full of spirit. Now we are trying to heal the wounds and are endeavouring to divide the burden caused by the war so that it will be borne by all citizens alike. Our government distributes all that there is to be given in equal portions to all, vict victuals as well as other necessities. By united effort, with goodwill and sympathy, we try to assist those who are in trouble and those who have lost their homes and relatives. So far as we have not so far we have not been suffering from very acute want and distress, although there has been some scarcity of foodstuffs, for instance. Two members have fallen in the war, and in a bombing raid an ex-member and his family were killed. The next section of the letter is entitled The Inner Fire. As regards the society, our members living in the ceded territories had, together with all the rest, about 500,000 people, to leave their homes and move away. The lodge in Vaipuri was dissolved, the members being dispersed all over the country. The war during last winter and the strained times we have been having ever since have not been conducive to work for international brotherhood, although that is needed just now. It is as if people are somehow bewildered and timid. In our own country we have, however, been able to keep up the inner fire, unprevented by war or anything else. Even if our outer work has been restricted to a few festivals arranged for members and friends. In these cases, the main feature of the programme has always been a theosophical lecture. Thus, in 1939, we celebrated November the 17th, the founding day of the Society, with a successful festival, and likewise the opening day of the Adyar Convention on December the 26th. The opening day of the Congress of the European Federation and the yearly meeting of our own section on May 12th and 13th, 1940, have been celebrated with festivals full of bro brotherly spirit. Uh, next section of the letter is entitled The Outer Work. During the war months, the work in some lodges was interrupted because the members had gone into the country, but in certain lodges, the meetings were held regularly all through the wartime. Our magazine, Theosophy, appeared regularly during the war, though somewhat smaller in size. This section did not publish any new books during last year, but Mr. Jinarajadaza's book, First Principles of Theosophy, has been translated into Finnish and we hope to be able to have it printed soon. The headquarters of our section moved on June 1st, 1940 to a smaller apartment in Kristianinkatu. I'll try that one again. Um, Kristianinkatu 3, Helsinki, which is our present address. 
we hope to be able to have a continued blessing on our work in the new place, which is comfortable and cosy, though modest in size. This autumn, I may mention that in my capacity of General Secretary, I visited 11 lodges in the countryside giving lectures on problems of current interest from the theosophical point of view. Looking hopefully into the future, I'm convinced of the fact that the constant following of the principles of non-violence and non-attachment in everyday life is the practical fulfilling of the ideals of universal brotherhood and unselfishness. I beg to convey to you all sincere wishes of goodwill from the members of the Theosophical Society in Finland. May peace and happiness and blessing of the Masters come to suffering, come to suffering mankind. Light follows darkness. <laughs>